Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining today's Ask Eric webinar. We'll go ahead and officially kick it off in just about a minute or so. Thanks. Thank you all for joining today's webinar. I'm Hillary Ross, Zoom Security and Privacy Product Marketing Manager, and I'll be moderating today's event. Before we get started, I have a few quick housekeeping notes. Please go ahead and add all your security and privacy questions to the Q&A panel, and we'll try to get to as many as possible. For questions on how to use certain features, we highly recommend you visit our knowledge base at support.zoom.us, watch our how-to videos on YouTube, read our blog posts, or attend a daily training. We'll add the links to these resources in the webinar chat. We are recording today's webinar and we'll send the link to all the registrants. We're once again excited to provide you an update on the progress we continue to make with respect to security and privacy, as well as the opportunity to ask Eric and a few of our top team members questions. Today, we have an exciting and full agenda. Eric, our founder and CEO, will kick off the webinar with a recap of some of the exciting security related updates that were announced at Zoomtopia. We'll then have Richard, our deputy CISO, talk about cybersecurity awareness month. He'll be followed by Amir, our lead product, marketing, lead product manager for trust and safety, who will share some more about account security and multi-factor authentication. Then Karthik, our principal product manager for security and privacy, will share some of our top tips for staying safe online as part of a cybersecurity quiz. And as a token of appreciation for participating in the quiz, we'll be raffling off a few Zoom t-shirts. We'll drop the raffle link in the webinar chat, so please be sure to add your information to that link. And lastly, we'll open it up for Q&A. We'll be joined by our CTO, Brendan, and our CISO, Jason. And with that, I'll turn it over to Eric. Thanks. Hey, thank you, Hillary. And thank you to everyone for joining us today. We are very excited to welcome you back to our webinar, which we are now hosting on a quarterly basis as part of our ongoing commitment to being transparent with our users about our privacy and security efforts. As you may know, last month, we hosted a Zoomtopia 2021, our fifth annual user conference, which was hosted entirely on Zoom events, our all-in-one events solution. And over 33,000 attendees joined us to engage in sessions, connect with peers, and help us transform the future of communications. And to those of you who attended, we hope you found the content and the sessions insightful. To those of you who didn't get a chance to attend, we encourage you to visit zoomdopia.com to watch the content on demand or review our blog post recaps on blog.zoom.us. In line with how we have put privacy, security, and transparency at the forefront of everything we do. This year's Zoomtopia included sessions dedicated to these topics. For those of you who did not attend and are interested in viewing these sessions, there are three key ones that I would like to highlight. First, we hosted a panel discussion with the CISO experts sharing security best practices for hybrid workforce. And second, we organized a session that discussed how privacy and compliance policies and programs need to evolve as a platform grows. And third, we held a presentation 
that a featured important ways users can enhance their security on Zoom platform. We also announced a number of exciting privacy and security related product updates. Previously only available in Zoom meetings, we will be extending our end-to-end -end encryption offering to Zoom phone in the coming year. Users will have a new option to upgrade to E2E during one-on-one -on -one phone calls that occur via the Zoom client. We are also partnering with Okita on an identity verification program that will make attestation and authentication integral to the Zoom experience. With the social engineering and phishing attacks becoming more sophisticated, protecting personal information is more important than ever. Identity authentication and attestation can help determine if a meeting guest is who they say they are. We are currently working on creating or bringing your own key offering to allow customers with strict compliance requirements or data residency needs to provision and manage their own encryption keys. It's important to note that BYOK is a separate offering from E2EE and is not designed for real-time use cases like a streaming video. It's best used for the, for the secure storage of large assets such as recording files or other recordings. We are planning to roll out BYOK as a customer beta in the coming months to rec for recordings of Zoom meetings, recordings of Zoom webinar and Zoom phone voicemails and recordings, or even calendar for Zoom rooms. You can, reach, you can read our September 13th blog post for more information on this security and privacy enhancement. All in all, Zoomtopia was a fantastic event packed with valuable content and the speakers shared great insights on a wide range of security topics. Also, I wanted to take this opportunity to say a big thank you again to our sponsors and to all the customers, partners, and attendees who took part in Zoomtopia. We look forward to seeing everyone again at the next year's Zoomtopia event. While the security and privacy enhancement we announced at Zoomtopia are exciting, security has and will continue to be one of our core values as we continually innovate, update, and refresh our platform to meet the evolving needs of our users. It's very important to us that our platform is built on trust and that we have a trust between users in online interactions and in our services. I wanted to share a quick video we put together on our commitment to security and the progress we've made. Security means a lot of things. To us at Zoom, security is a core value. For over a decade, we've worked to create a seamless and secure experience and work to enhance security for millions of people around the globe. We've innovated, updated, and refreshed our platform to meet the evolving needs of our users. And in April 2020, we kicked those efforts into high gear. Since then, we've released numerous UI and feature updates, including improvements to existing features like passcodes and waiting rooms, as well as new enhancements such as the security icon, data center routing, at-risk meeting notifier, and more. We've also acquired Keybase, launched a CISO Council and Advisory Board, rolled out our end-to-end -end encryption feature, enhanced our bug bounty program, kicked off our Ask Me Anything webinars, unveiled our Trust Center, and made over 200 new hires to the security and privacy staff within the past year. We're proud of how far we've come, but know there's always more work to do. As the security landscape evolves, so will we, with trust always leading the way.
Thank you. And we are very proud of the progress we made. And I wanted to take this opportunity to thank our team for their continuous commitment to innovating with security and privacy at the forefront. With that, I will now turn it over to Richard. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Um, hello, everyone. I'm happy and excited to be here today to talk uh, about how Zoom is celebrating Cybersecurity Awareness Month here in October. This is a great opportunity to remind ourselves of the steps that we can take to enhance security and better protect ourselves online. The next slide. Uh, so yes, October is Cybersecurity Awareness Month. Um, and uh, Cybersecurity Awareness Month uh, was created by the US Department of Homeland Security and the National Cybersecurity Alliance. Uh, it's really a collaborative uh, effort between government and industry to promote safe and uh, secure online experiences. And this year marks the 18th anniversary of Cybersecurity Awareness Month. Um, in, the, in that time, it has grown exponentially, reaching consumers, small and medium-sized businesses, corporations, educational institutions and young people across the US. And this year, Zoom is proud to be recognized as a Cybersecurity Awareness Month champion. The 2021 champion program recognizes companies and organizations who are dedicated to promoting a safe, more secure and more trusted internet. So in that spirit, we want to call out some great resources that are available to you with tips to secure your Zoom experience. So over the next uh, course of the next week, we'll be promoting on LinkedIn five of our most helpful security resources. And here on the screen is a preview of three of those five resources uh, that we want to highlight for you. So each day this week, we're going to share one useful resource our Zoom customers can reference. And we encourage our Zoom customers to take the opportunity this month to review and enhance their security on the Zoom platform across our products, including Zoom meetings, Zoom events, and Zoom rooms. Also, uh, there is another important uh, date this month uh, uh, regarding security. So tomorrow, October 21st, is the inaugural Global Encryption Day. Uh, this is a digital event organized by the Global Encryption Coalition that promotes and defends the use of encryption to protect the security and privacy of everyone on the internet. Um, uh, as uh, Eric mentioned, last year Zoom announced that end-to-end -end encryption uh, was available to all Zoom users, and we're proud to provide one of the highest levels of encryption possible. So with Global Encryption Day happening tomorrow, we wanted to take this opportunity to remind everyone that end-to-end -end encryption can be en enabled for all of your meetings and our business customer Zoom administrators can configure their accounts to require end-to-end -end encryption for their meetings. You can read more about uh, our end-to-end -end encryption uh, capabilities and how to enable this feature on the Zoom blog and on our customer support pages. Uh, we'll also be sharing a post on LinkedIn tomorrow with more information on our end-to-end -end encryption features. Um, cyber threats are real and they're only getting more dangerous and we recognize that companies are only as strong as their weakest link. So we want to do everything that we can to build a strong human firewall. We have a bunch of really great internal events at Zoom during Cybersecurity Awareness Month to remind ourselves of how important security is for our workforce. Uh, and at Zoom, we're committed to deploying the right training, education, and awareness efforts to help instill that change as we make security second nature for all Zoom employees, not just during Cybersecurity Awareness Month, but continuously throughout the year. So I encourage you to check out uh, our blog post from October 1st at blog.zoom.us. And there you can see more details about what Zoom is doing internally to educate our employees during Cybersecurity Awareness Month and beyond. And so with that, I'll turn it over to Amir to talk about Zoom account security. Thank you, Richard. I'm happy to be here today to share more about how users, admins, and organizations can leverage existing Zoom features to enhance the security of their accounts. Next slide. Let me begin by using the story of the three little pigs as an analogy to illustrate the different levels of account security and the factors which influence it. A quick recap of the story. In it, the big bad wolf manages to blow down the houses of the first two pigs made of straw and sticks. However, the wolf fails to destroy the house of the third pig, which was made of bricks. In this analogy, your account is like your house with all the pretty things in it. But if you choose to secure your account with a weak password, 
like one, two, three or password, as a lot of people do on the internet, your account can easily be compromised, just like the first house made of straw. Next, if you choose to secure your account with a strong password, like using numbers, special characters, etc., your account is definitely more secure against simple attacks, and it makes it more difficult for bad actors to gain access to your account. However, a committed bad actor can still hack into your account via data breaches, by phishing attacks, and things like that. Just like the big bad wolf who just needed a little extra effort to destroy the second house made of sticks. However, if you choose to secure your account with a strong password and multi-factor authentication, your account is further protected and you will make it very hard for bad actors to compromise your accounts. Just like the third house, which was made of bricks, which the wolf was unable to destroy. Requiring multiple methods of authentication makes it harder for bad actors to use password cracking tools or use stolen credentials to break into accounts. Even if a bad hacker hijacks a user's password, because of MFA, the user's account would still be protected. Moving on, next slide. Now, let's talk about multi-factor authentication. Multi-factor authentication identifies online users by requiring them to present two or more credentials that authenticate their ownership of the account. On this slide, we have featured some common ways of authentication in increasing order of security from one-time codes via SMS, voice authentication, authenticator apps, and hardware tokens. With multi-factor authentication, users and organizations can reduce the risk of identity theft and security breaches by adding extra layers of security and prevent bad actors from accessing accounts. Now let's talk about two-factor authentication on Zoom. We wanted to demonstrate how multi-factor authentication and in particular, two-factor authentication works on Zoom's platform. With Zoom's two-factor authentication, users have the option to use authenticator apps that support time-based one-time password protocol, such as Google Authenticator, Microsoft Authenticator, and FreeOTP, or have Zoom send a code via SMS. With two-factor authentication enabled, users first log into their accounts by entering the username and password as seen in the screenshot on the left. Then they will be required to either request a one-time password via SMS or generate one on their authenticator app and enter this code to gain access to their accounts as shown on the screenshot on the right. Moving on, there are beyond 2FA, two, two there are other ways in which you can secure your account. One is using single sign-on or SSO. Single sign-on allows users to log in one time under one set of credentials and get access to applications, data, and services that they need in the organization. It is also normally associated with MFA uh, features. Zoom has a single sign-on option for paid accounts, and this makes it easy for users to secure access to the Zoom accounts with just one click. Another way to is to use third-party identity providers like Google and Facebook. This way, you can use one set of credentials across multiple sites online. These providers also have ways of MFA, which, which are available to keep your credentials secure. I hope this was useful information and you can start adopting 2FA to keep your Zoom and other accounts safe from the big bad bulls of the internet. With that, I will hand it over to Karthik to conduct the cybersecurity quiz. Well, thank you so much, Amir. I'm delighted to be here to conduct a true or false quiz, everyone, that we've prepared to test your knowledge of cybersecurity. To make this quiz more interactive, we're gonna be using the polling feature to gather your responses. For this quiz, we'll first flash the statement on a topic, and we'll give everyone a minute to enter the responses. We'll then share the correct answer and share some additional cybersecurity trips. Okay, with that, let's begin with our first question. Let's move on to the next slide. Secure your device. On the topic of securing your devices, is this statement true or false? Software updates make your device less secure. Let's launch the poll and we're gonna give everyone a minute to enter your responses via the polling feature.
We're starting to see some responses come in. This is great. Let's give it a few more seconds. Looks like the results are up. Okay, let's take a look at them. Uh, we've got 15% of folks that said true and 85% that said false. The correct answer is of course false. Let's move on to the next slide. So here are some tips to help you secure your device. If your device requires an update or a patch, downloading that update or a patch will ensure that your software is up to date and protect it against any known vulnerabilities in that software. In addition to software updates, here are three more tips that can help you keep your device secure. First, download and keep up to date your antivirus software. Next, don't lend your work device to friends or family. And finally, secure your laptop or computer when you're not using it. With that, let's move on to our second quiz question. Uh, on the topic of securing your data, is this statement true or false? Using VPN or virtual private networks encrypts your data, which makes it unreadable to any hackers. Let's launch the poll and we'll give everyone about a minute to enter your responses. Looks like the answers are in. Okay, so what did people say? Let's take a look. 55% of you responded true and 45% responded false. The correct answer is true. Let's move on to the next slide. Here's some tips to protect your data. VPNs encrypt your data, which makes your data unreadable to hackers or unauthorized parties and ensures that your data doesn't end up in the wrong hands. In addition to VPNs, here are some other tips that can help you protect your data. First, two-factor authentication. Amir talked about this a little bit. We recently enhanced two-factor authentication for Zoom desktop client and mobile app. Turning on two-factor authentication for your digital accounts provides another layer of security by requiring additional identifying information during logins. Second, speak to your IT department. Now your role or position may require handling very sensitive or confidential information. So make sure to contact your IT department to ensure you are following all the recommended security measures to keep your data secure. Third, remain vigilant. Phishing attacks are some of the most common cyber attacks today. And you can avoid them by scanning attachment sent over email using antivirus software and checking that emails are coming from known accounts. And finally, confirming requests you receive over email over other communication channels also. And then last but not least, be aware of the network. It's easy to jump on a public Wi-Fi network without knowing, but it could be compromised and you could put your data at risk from that. So when in doubt, reach out to your provider or your company's IT or security team for additional guidance. Let's move on to the next question, folks. Okay, this is our final question. And this question is, on the topic of securing your meetings, on the topic of securing meetings, is the statement true or false? If an unauthorized user joins your meeting, we recommend you end your meeting. Let's launch the poll and we'll give people a minute to respond. Let's give it a few more seconds and we'll close the poll. Let's take a look at the responses. All right, so we have 47% of you saying true and 53% saying it's false. The correct answer is false. 
Let's move on to the next slide. And we wanna share with you some tips to protect your meetings. If you have unauthorized users joining your meetings, you can use the remove participant feature. And this will remove the user from the meeting and prevent them from rejoining the meeting. In addition to the remove participant feature, here are some other tips that can help you reduce the potential for meeting disruptions. First, you can employ waiting rooms. By enabling a virtual staging area, this will prevent people from joining a meeting until you, the host, are ready. And so meeting hosts can then admit people in the waiting room individually or all at once. Second, lock your meetings. If you confirm that all of your participants have joined your meeting, you can use the lock meeting feature to prevent any additional participants from joining the meeting. And then thirdly, control the chat and screen sharing options. Under the allow participants to section of your screen, you can enable or disable participants ability to use the chat function and share their screens. With that, we've come to the end of our quiz. We hope that you found the cybersecurity tips useful and I'm gonna turn it back to Hillary. Excellent, thank you, Karthik. Before we open the webinar up for Q&A, as promised, we're raffling off a few Zoom t-shirts as a token of our appreciation for you taking the time to learn about cybersecurity best practices. So please click on the link that we shared in the webinar chat to register and you might become a proud owner of a Zoom t-shirt. And with that, I'll open it up for the Q&A. We've had several people write in with questions about best practices for passwords. So the first question to kick it off is, what are the best tips for creating and managing passwords? Brandon? So happy to jump in on that one. You know, creating a strong, unique password for every account is one of the most critical steps you can take to protect uh, your privacy. You know, passwords should consist of a mix of characters, including upper and lowercase, numbers, symbols, and longer passwords are naturally stronger. I also recommend uh, avoiding using personal information like names, birthdays, or email address. So using all these things together and having a unique password per, per service definitely makes it stronger. Great, Brendan. Is any any other tips to add from the panelists? Um, I can add a tip. Uh, one way to kind of have unique passwords across sites and remember them is uh, think of a phrase like I love Zoom. You know, that could be a password and you can have different combinations of it across different sites. So in one site, you can use one instead of I. In another site, you could use zeros instead of O's. And that way, it's easier to remember the password, but it's still unique from one, one side to the other. So that's a quick tip I learned and it's helped me a lot. So. Great. Thanks, Samir. And one more follow-up on passwords. How often should people change their passwords? Yeah, I can take that, Hillary. Um, so uh, we recommend that you change your password about every three months. Um, so you know you can time that with the change of the seasons if you want, um, so that you can remember when to do it. Um, and uh, and so you know just in case uh, your password does appear out there somehow it's been hacked, uh, changing your password um, every three months will. Um, you know, will prevent somebody from going and getting a, a password dump um, that might appear out on the internet um, and, and they won't be able to use that old password that, that you're using. So uh, every 90 days is good. Um, in addition to that, I'd also say, you know, um, when the, when the uh, as we're coming up here on the end of daylight savings time in, in the US, that's a great time of the year to go check the uh, code on your internet router and, and update that so that you're protecting yourself from any vulnerabilities that might exist in your internet router and your access points. Thanks, Richard, that's really helpful. Um, moving along, which of the two factor authentications is better? Um, SMS, um, the authenticator app, uh, what would we recommend? Take that. Um, so as mentioned in the slides, there are various levels of security offered by 2FA uh, solutions also. Uh, the SMS one is the most common, uh, but it also can be uh, intercepted by committed at attackers. Uh, then the next level is using one of those authenticator apps like Google Authenticator or Microsoft Authenticator. These were These are great. They, uh, they have uh, the time-based protocol uh, and they also work without internet. So uh, even if you're traveling and, and roaming, so you can still use it. 
the however the gold gold standard is using hardware tokens uh, which are on your device uh, and so that's considered the gold standard the hardest uh, two factor authentication to break uh, so those those are kind of the main uh, uh, levels of security you have across dfa uh, solutions yeah just the add on just quickly i think um, you know my favorite is uh, okta authentication app it's super easy because when you send an SMS, quite often I get so many SMS messages right from different sources. I have no idea which one is right. I think uh, you know most of enterprise customers and they use uh, Okta. It's a very trustable company. You know that's always my high, my highly recommend Okta. Yeah, it's a great tool. Another recommendation that I would have there is uh, use a password manager. So you don't even have to generate a, a yeah. password that you have to remember, right? It can automatically generate a password for you that is uh, super complex, super long, impossible for anybody to guess, impossible for it to be, uh, you know, cracked using automation and, and, and uh, you know, uh, large data resources. And so, um, you know, you have one password, uh, master password that is the key to you to get into your password database, but the software automatically puts your password in for you. And so, you know, that that is a super easy way to do it and, and something that I do for myself as well. Thanks, Richard. I'm also a huge fan of 1Password. It's done a lot for me personally to improve my password hygiene. Uh, on the quiz, cybersecurity quiz, we mentioned the VPN. Uh, could someone share what is a VPN or how do I get a VPN? Well, VPN uh, stands for virtual private networking, um, and it is a way to create a, an encrypted tunnel between your computer and the destination that you're talking to out across the internet. And that, in that encrypted tunnel, um, the, the, the keys to that encryption, the only way to decrypt the information that's inside that tunnel um, uh, is if you have the keys, and those keys are generated dynamically by the server and by your client. Um, and so, you know, using a VPN will allow you to communicate across a, an untrusted network. So, for example, if you're, you know, at a coffee shop on, on a, a Wi-Fi network, you can't necessarily trust that that network is going to be secure. And so if you establish a VPN connection uh, between your computer and your office network, for example, um, you can feel safe and secure in, uh, in communicating across the internet and across those, those untrusted public networks like in a coffee shop. Thanks, Richard. And welcome, Jason. He's the Zoom CISO. Um, thanks for joining us for the Q&A. Um, we also talked about how important it is to update our software for security reasons. How do I look for Zoom updates and see what the version, what versions users on my account are using? Hi, Hillary. Happy to take that one. Uh, so there are a number of things in terms of checking for updates. Um, First and foremost, if you're in the Zoom client, uh, you can always click on uh, the menu bars or on your profile picture on the main page and do a check for updates right in the client. And that will go to our cloud and let you know what updates are available and what new features are there. Beyond that capability within the native client, there's always our support site, support.zoom.us, where we list the release notes about all of Zoom's products and functionality. And we have status.zoom.us, where whenever we're launching a software release, we'll announce it on that site. Now, for our IT administrators that are watching today, another great tool is our dashboard. Because on our dashboard, you can actually see what version is deployed across your entire enterprise to have that visibility, not just of what updates Zoom has, but what version is running across your organization and maybe which users you want to reach out to to help update their software. Great. Thanks, Brendan. And a question maybe for you, Jason or Richard. In light of Cybersecurity Awareness Month, what are some best practices when it comes to driving awareness and training um, employees on security? Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll take this one. Um, uh, I know we'll be able to provide some links. I know Gary, Gary Sorrentino did a blog post on this on what we did. Um, one of the most important things that, that I love doing is, is thinking about how 
gamification can apply. Um, I love it when like for our engineering team where we can have games where they can play in competitions. Like I really fi find you get a lot of great engagement when you're doing those things. For example, like uh, we have a security escape room that's been super popular. You know, the escape room where you can, the physical version is you got to figure out all the clues on how to get out. We, we actually have like a cyber one that we do that and there's a competition uh, across the organization around those. So I really love those types of things. Uh, the other side on the, on our engineering side, we also have like a uh, kind of like a hacking competition where uh, the team can't team, individuals can compete to find the most vulnerabilities and there's uh, awards to that. I really, I really find that sticking to kind of that positive uh, outcome and getting rewards is, is super impactful. Um, and I've always had great feedback in, in doing that. Also bringing in great like speakers outside that are super knowledgeable is also something that, that we like to do. So I highly recommend those, those types of areas and really trying to make it as fun and, and uh, knowledgeable as possible, I think is the way that I like to approach that. Great. Thanks, Jason. I agree. I'm doing the cybersecurity escape room tomorrow. I'm looking forward to it. Um, <laughs> Karthik, a question for you. Could you uh, share more about Zoom's plan to build um, or launch Build Your Own Key? Absolutely, Hillary. Happy to take that question. Uh, Eric mentioned this in passing, but in Zoomtopia, we had a presentation to cover Zoom's roadmap plans for Bring Your Own Key Encryption. So the first phase, our beta is kicking off in the early part of next year. And basically, you know, we're going to cover uh, some of these Zoom assets with respect to meeting recordings, webinar recordings, phone voicemail, phone recordings, and also calendar, which means that customers of these services, as they're recording things, will have will be able to supply encryption and decryption keys to protect their data. The other thing that's ancillary here is that the first phase will interface with customers standing up their key management systems in AWS. And we're talking to customers about what to build next in our roadmap, but that sort of covers the first phase for us. Exciting. Thanks, Karthik. Okay. And Jason, another question for you. Uh, please describe the cybersecurity rapid response connection or coordination to internal customers, the SecOps team. How do we quickly re how do we react quickly through Zoom's team? Also, do you have plans to simplify or make them make more intuitive the amount of setup and admin options? That's a long question. <laughs> Okay, so the first first one is I'll, I'll cover kind of the security side of it, and uh, maybe Brandon can cover kind of the 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 broader technical one. So uh, first and foremost, I always recommend for everybody there in the admin portal there is a security contact uh, field where you can put in your C cert alias or whatnot. That is the one place where I go first. In, in terms of being able to reach out to a company. Like let's say if something happens and I need to reach out to a company, that's the first place I look. If, if, they, if you don't fill that out, what I'll do is I'll email all your admins and account owners and try to triangulate to get in. And, and as you know, all that does is it takes more time. So I highly, highly recommend you put that in there. The other thing we've done with, with several customers is um, and, and this does take an investment on both sides, is tabletops. We've done where it's a C-cert to C-cert. So the C-cert is computer security incident response team, the C-cert to C-cert tabletops on, okay, so if we have an incident, how do we work together and how do we partner together? So that's something that we've also done several times to be able to uh, make it quicker, more efficient and effective. So those are the two things that I'll leave you with that are, that are super critical. Great. And one more question maybe for you, Jason. Um, we've had several questions about passwords. How safe are password banks? So um, one, of, one of the things that I always tell like my family and friends when talking about passwords is I'm, I'm actually a huge fan of password banks with the caveat that you implement it correctly. Um, so for me, when I think about password banks, it's a, it is, it's like a wallet. It's a, you can go to a website. There's multiple out there that, that basically store all your passwords. So because it is a master account to access all of your passwords, 
One, I always recommend having like a hardware token if possible, like to be able to authentic I use that token to use that master password. Also, the password should be a passphrase, make it really long, lots of words. Uh, that's also something that I definitely recommend. Um, and then the, the, the other one that I love about uh, password vaults and banks is that, uh, and I highly recommend this, uh, I know a lot of people don't do this, is, is there's actually an auto-generate feature within these banks that create passwords. And I highly recommend every single account that you have has a different password. Put it into that vault. It makes a lot of the vaults make it easy when you go to the website, you can just click on your, the vault pops up and you can just automatically put it in. But when, when you think of if there's uh, companies that have breaches, when you use a, a random password for every single website, it makes it to where you're not, if that password gets out, they don't have access to everything. I know so many people, and I really give my parents a hard time on this one. So they've learned because I've forced them down this path is, always use different passwords for different accounts. So those are kind of the things that I think are super important. I do love the banks, but if you use an easy password to get into that bank, it makes it easy for anybody else to get in. So you've got to make sure that that initial entry is tough. Thanks, Jason. We had another question I liked. Um, what is the best place to look for ongoing learning session, sessions such as this one? I'm responsible for many organizational Zoom accounts and want to assure I'm always learning and keeping current. Um, well, we host this webinar quarterly, and I also suggest you check out zoom.us slash events. There's a lot of great trainings there, as well as we just launched um, support.zoom.us, support which is another great place to check for resources. Um, Another question for, for Brendan or for Jason, anyone on the panel really, um, what are the best ways to protect your Zoom meetings? We get this question all the time. I would, I would first start with, uh, we've, we've covered this a ton in our uh, previous webinars on how to do that. I'll, I'll start with the basics here, always. Always have a password on the meeting. Uh, two, if you can, have multi-factor authentication, even better to be able to get into your account. Um, three, I like waiting rooms. Some people don't like waiting rooms, but that's a way to, to validate when people are coming in. Um, so I, I would stick to those basics, but we definitely go ad nauseum into all the kind of features that we have in that. In the, in the previous, uh, we also have a uh, a trust portal where we have all kinds of great information with all of our blogs around security and privacy. Uh, that, that's something that Hillary can provide in the, the link to that as well afterwards. So I'd highly recommend that because we definitely go deep, deep into those areas. Thanks, Jason. I will say this is our most common question. So we do have an excellent blog resource. It's one of um, the resources, resources we're sharing on LinkedIn. Um, it's how to keep uninvited guests out of your Zoom meetings. If you Google it or search it, I'm sure you'll find it. And it looks like we just have two minutes left, left. And so I have the winners of the Zoom t-shirt raffle. They are, <clears throat> excuse me, Stephanie Kleiner, Rob Seringer, and Glenda Coyer. Apologies if I didn't say your name right, but I'll be following up um, and I'll be sending you a Zoom t-shirt. So congratulations. And it looks like we just have a minute left. Eric, any parting words or any other panelists, any closing remarks? No, I want to say thank you all. Really appreciate your time you know, to trust Zoom and to join today's session. Thank you all, really appreciate That sounds great. Well, happy Cybersecurity Awareness Month and we'll see you in a quarter. Bye. Thank you.